What's up? What's up? What's up, everyone? Hello, Ben Guardians. Welcome back to another live stream. And once again, I am in San Antonio, Texas, a little bit out of town. So apologies for the subpar audio. I don't have my microphone with me. Um, but yeah, you know, of course, as I mentioned on our last stream, I'm here trying to get a little bit of a, a break from the toxicity from the Twitter sphere. And as always, as soon as I leave town, uh, you know, shit hits the fan. We're in the middle of an all out, you know, lefty civil war. Uh, we got AOC on one side. We got Rokana on the other, um, you know, trading blows over this essentially, you know, uh, Nomiki Khan situation, which we've broken down in our past stream, commented on as well as in our call-in episode from today. Uh, but there's even more to discuss. There's even more, you know, beef to discuss. And, you know, just the implications of this whole entire situation are super, super interesting. So I'm excited to keep going over it. And we got mad, you know, Twitter wars to talk about, guys. Food fights all across left Twitter, like I said. So, like I said, you know, despite the fact that I'm on vacation, I'm here fulfilling my duty. Uh, got to break down the drama for you guys. Um, and of course, Zach is as well. So what's up, man? Yeah, dude, honestly, leave it to Nomiki Kons to uh, make AOC look like a, a serious leftist in the face of uh, Ro Khanna. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been an interesting couple of days because outside of this, uh, the left hasn't I feel like there hasn't been, you know, a ton going on. So I feel like that always creates the perfect storm for everybody to jump onto this like one specific issue, which is really just a microcosm of like other uh you know disagreements discrepancies you know as it always is whenever there's a real food fight on the internet it's always to somebody who was just a you know a passer buyer right uh unfamiliar with the roots of this argument you'd be like wow this is a weird thing to get hung up about but it, you know it was just the it was just the climate was right for a fervent disagreement about this and nomiki Kant decided that she was going to uh she was going to be the one to the catalyst if you will yeah. uh to kickstart this debate uh and yeah ready to break it down um and uh and go from there yeah, of course, huge shout out to the patron community. We do like to start and end our live streams with a big shout out to our patrons. So thank you guys so much for the support. It keeps the show going. We would not be able to do it without you guys. Um, and if you want a, a spot of your own on our shout out screen, then proceed to hit that link in the description. It's patreon.com slash the Vanguard channel. And it's going to be in the description of this stream and all of our video content. Uh, so again, if you enjoy the content we create, if you enjoy uh, the frequency which we come to you guys, even while we're on vacation, you know, sacrificing our mental health in order to break <laughs> for you guys. Just kidding. Uh, we love it. Trust me. But anyway, thank you so much, guys. And, and please do consider contributing via Patreon or PayPal if you enjoy the content we create. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get into the good stuff. Um, and yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in so far. I know we have some more comrades that are going to be trickling in here soon. So yeah, make sure late, to a little bit, bit, little bit late for our show normally. Gavin and I have carved out a hearty bread tube you know, lunch hour time period, you know, right around, right around one thirty, two o'clock where we're live. Now people don't know what to do. They're like, we started a show at 7 30 PM central time. What, what's going on? So it's all good, but we wanted to come at you when we could. Uh, and yeah, uh, super excited to break this down. I don't know. What do you want to start with? Do you want to start with uh, the fact that the majority report basically like unendorsed no Miki cons, like they did that whole like announcement for them. And then they basically the entire, I don't know if you call it a cast, an entire crew of majority report. I think they, every single one of them basically came out and unendorsed her. I, I mean, pretty pathetic and embarrassing, like one of the most embarrassing, embarrassing for everybody, uh, but uh, specifically no Miki Konst. Uh, anyway, uh, it, it, it fucking crazy. Yeah, so this is just incredibly, incredibly awkward, this whole entire situation. Um, you know, so let's take a look here. As we commented on and presented to you guys on our last stream from a couple of days ago, uh, Nomiki Kans actually went to the majority report, went on the majority report to make this massive announcement running for office. Isn't this exciting? Of course, uh, all of the majority report crew, her close friends and co-hosts uh, gave her their you know full hearted endorsement and support as you would expect. Um, but then everything went down that we talked about. And it wasn't just a little flash in the pan that quickly went away. No, this persisted. The calls uh, against Nomiki Kans and the people pointing out you know, the flaws in her strategy uh, continued. They were abundant. And that all led to a this. mounting crusade against her, essentially, is what yeah. developed online. Like, I don't mean to overhype this, but that's what I meant by the perfect storm. Like, a lot of people are like, why did this turn into such an ordeal? Uh, admittedly, partially because... 
uh, you know, it was just the, the the opportunity was ripe for it. But it, it really yep. did grow uh, from here. People are from all across the lefty world uh, uniting to to give their opinions on this. Almost all of them uh, to endorse the other candidate, which I just think oh. is hilarious. But anyway, let's play the clip. <laughs> yeah, let's check this out. And obviously, you know, Emma's pretty polite, as you would expect, being a friend and co-host of Nomiki. Uh, but we're going to get into a range of reactions from across the left and not just people like Zach and I, you know, people that are more in the majority report lane uh, that are honestly seemingly pretty pissed off about Nomiki cons. They're like, what the hell do you think you're doing? Um, so I'm really interested to break that down. Again, it's not just people like Zach and I this time that are going after Nomiki or calling her out. It's her own ally. It's people in her very specific lane that seem to be most pissed about that. Um, but again, as Aaron uh, Mate says here, this is pretty awkward. I happen to agree. Let's take a listen here as uh, Emma Vigland live on air on the Majority Report grapples with the potentially unintended consequences that uh, she wasn't thinking of or wasn't aware of when that initial endorsement was made. So yeah, let's check this out. I found this to be just super, super cringy, super awkward. Um, and let's take a look. Emma's cashews writes in, Hey, I'm majority crew. I like Nomi and think she'd be a great senator. But are you worried about the chance she splits the left vote with Kristen Gonzalez and Crowley gets elected? Gonzalez already got endorsed by AOC, DSA, and the Working Families Party. So why should I support a candidate when the rest of the institutional left is backing another leftist poggers? Um, Can we pause this for one second? It's a great point. Yeah. Just like, I was going to say, that's like the best that's like if you listen to the majority report every day that's the exact kind of question they would expect you to ask so i just want to say that and even and a credit to emma for how she handles this for sure just to you know uh be objective but like you know they can't be mad at somebody asking that question if 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 they've been consistently listening to like the you know the theory of change that somebody like emma or sam uh, would be proposing yeah absolutely. or even no Mika herself which we you know right why should I support a candidate when the rest of the institutional left is backing another leftist poggers? Um, it's a great point. <laughs> a great point. Um, look, yesterday, I did not know that uh, Nomi was running in the district with uh, Kristen Gonzalez and this uh, who's backed by DSA, one of this historic, the uh, historically large number of DSA endorsed candidates in the upcoming elections here in New York. I wish I had known that, frankly. Um, you know, Nomiki's a friend of the show and she's gonna, uh, you know, it's her choice to run. Um, but I really don't have an answer for, uh, for how that because I yeah I mean I, I got a lot of those messages too I didn't anticipate that conflict and perhaps I should have I haven't looked closely at the candidates yet right. other than to know that they exist and and frankly I, I was a little confused because the uh, districts had just been redrawn so it was hard to keep track for me yeah but but look this is nothing personal even ballot PD was guys, wrong that I support Rip. the DSA candidates um this is true if uh DSA put in somebody against you know, my buddy Chris running in Dallas he didn't run as a DSA candidate uh, I would have supported DSA over over him um, because of that ideological reason. And I think like, look, I think there's certain folks who say like, this is democracy uh, and you know, win. Uh, and I kind of uh, in the vacuum can relate to that and like see the best candidate win. But you know, you do have that Crowley um, vote split issue and uh, you do have uh, the entire rest of the left lining up behind Kristen Gonzalez, uh, who I think looks like a really good candidate. and. Uh, who I'm probably going to donate to. So uh, yeah, it's a. I, I we've heard the criticisms. Um, and Va uh, very valid, yeah. very valid, frankly. And I think that's like the challenge probably for Nomiki's campaign is how do you like that's a huge concern. <laughs> yeah. So super super awkward. Like I said, um, and, and another thing that they mentioned here that I don't even think we remembered to talk about on our last stream is that Joe Crowley himself is also in this race. Um, so it's not just kind of this random um, concern out here about the vote splitting. It's not just like some theoretical, you know, we shouldn't split the left vote. No, there's actually a very serious and, and founded concern here um, that with two left candidates, two like DSA style candidates running in essentially the exact same lane, uh, it very, very likely could straight up give the election to none other than Joe Crowley, 
who, as you guys, I'm sure remembered, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez uh, defeated and picked off when he was a sitting congressman. Um, so, of course, this is extra personal for AOC, who has waded into this and backed Kristen Gonzalez, um, who now Nomihi Kans is running against. Uh, Emma Viglin went on to make another statement on Twitter regarding this whole mess, which I'm going to pull up uh, right here. She says, I'm just going to be clear about this now. I support the entire New York DSA slate of candidates, not for personal reasons, but for ideological ones based in what I think is best for the movement. So just in case she didn't make it clear in that clip, she's coming out here and saying, you know, it's nothing personal necessarily, um, but I support the DSA slate and I'm going to vote for them. I'm going to support them, even though my friend and co-host is in this fight too. And as I pointed out too, you know, uh, we don't often give a lot of credit to Emma, bit, but I do think she deserves some here, you know, regardless of the awkwardness. Uh, I guess props to her for sticking by her guns, because it, it does seem like within the DSA, there's really this mentality that, you know, you support the DSA candidate, regardless of your personal feelings, regardless of your friendships. Uh, you got to get behind the slate you got to get behind the DSA endorsed candidates. And it's interesting how much more rigidly uh, people like Emma Vigland and Matt Letch and uh, Ben Burgess are adhering to that principle um, instead of Nomiki Kans, who's also a part of the DSA. And instead of, you know, getting behind the DSA candidate, she instead saw a lane for herself and decided to try to take advantage of that in, in what basically appears to be uh, a vanity a vanity pro project 100 yeah. percent, and that, that this is all about narcissism which i just think makes it worse right i just think it makes it worse um and look i i really appreciated what matt Le leck was saying or let uh, i don't forgive me i don't know exactly how to pronounce his last name anyway uh the dude i appreciate what he was saying uh because he, he was like you know in a vacuum i do believe like oh you know send everybody out there may the best person win the role for the politician but you know it, it wasn't like Nomiki uh, announced this like you know when she found out that the district was going to be new like clearly uh, this other woman had been in the race for a while now if she'd garnered these endorsements already by the time Nomiki made her announcement um, so that's a little strange uh, <laughs> clearly uh, I've probably Sam Cedar and you know, I mean Matt is the producer and Emma Vigilant said she didn't know beforehand so I guess it's all I guess this rests on Sam Cedar thinking it was a good idea to bring bring her out to uh, you know uh, have her uh, make this announcement and then also they tweeted you know left is best at nomiki cons nomiki for new york.com so you know and as this tweeter points out you know uh this is still up right so i guess it's the official position of the show and you know i guess that that's fair you know it, i mean the majority of his the, the host like the main host is sam cedar right so i mean i guess i guess he's able to make that decision but it seems it's definitely a poor one and yeah we have to give credit to um you know emma and matt for for, you know literally this is their job this is how they make a living you know most people don't just fucking square off with their boss politically on twitter and be like hey i actually thought that was a bad decision and uh yeah i disagree with that and you know so there's an awkwardness to this there's a lived experience element of this uh where now it's going to be massively awkward whenever they have to engage with nomiki because no matter what they say about how it's not personal you know that sh she's going to take it personally and uh you know uh whatever and and you know really it's, I mean, it's all on her for not doing her homework better and not running in a race that was less crowded and less critical, right? I mean, a guy like Joe Crowley is such a fucking villain in the left, right? Just, and and uh, frankly, a lot of that has to do with the fact that he was featured in the Knock Down the House documentary as like the like as the opponent of AOC, and then that was such a big a momentous victory for the uh, left because you know obviously she won, she had to run against her, uh, you know. Um, sh um, uh, again, for re-election most recently, and that wasn't very uh, like noteworthy. But that first victory of unseating a a blue dog Democrat that and people forget, right? Because again, his career has fallen, and now he's just running for this you know more humble uh, state senate seat. Also, but just to break in real quick, someone is saying that it's actually not Joe Crowley; it's a it's a different Crowley, a female Crowley. Um, so I I apologize if I fucked that up. I can swear I read that it was Joe himself. Um, but obviously, Zach and I aren't in New York City. We're just trying to glean this information from Twitter and, and such. So feel free to let us know if anyone can confirm or deny that. But I may have messed up there. Well, I mean, they also say Crowley in the majority report. It's his clip niece. 
Elizabeth Crowley, his niece that's running. Interesting. So it's not Joe Crowley. It's Elizabeth Crowley. I don't know. I hope that the apple fell far as fuck from the tree multiple times removed in that instance. But uh, that's interesting. Obviously, you can't like pin somebody's politics to like, you know what you're like. My uncle is a fucking idiot. I mean, that man is, I mean, barely capable of sustaining himself. Like I wouldn't be, want to be compared to my uncle. That being said, in these political dynasties, usually you're fed a fucking script and that's what you're supposed to go ahead and, and do and spell out for people. So, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Thank you guys for clarifying that we were misled. So here we are just being fucking dinguses, but in either way, it doesn't really matter. Uh, there's going to be a democratic candidate to get behind and they're going to be neoliberal and they're going to be establishment and the DSA. Uh, I think in, in kind of like a union fashion, I'm, I hope this is, um, yeah, okay, exact same politics as I would imagine so, kind of like an Elizabeth Cheney or whatever, uh, kind of a figure where it's just like, oh, yeah, you're just your diet, uh, you know, diet dick or whatever the fuck you want to call that. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, so I do, like, I, I do understand, you know, I don't believe in spoiler candidates either. I would never argue that uh, Nomiki doesn't have the right to run in this in any capacity. Uh, you know, I feel like we've clarified that like 10 million times. Uh, do I think it's extremely poor strategy? The answer is yes. And that's why uh, I think that, you know, it's the correct move for all these people to be like, you know, the, the DSA kind of already had this kind of vote, right? I imagine that they have a vote amongst people to decide who they are going to. Uh, yes. Yeah, they, I, that, they would have to, right? That would be like the opposite of the DSA a yeah. ethos to not vote on that. So it's kind of like in a union, right? Like you right. might not always get your way, but it's democratic because you always got to vote and be represented. And then it's like your duty to like respect democracy and go along with. It. It'd be like our presidential elections if they weren't absolutely fucked and undemocratic as hell with the electoral college. But right. if there was like a literal sincere, uh, if there was a literal sincere, um, you know, I'm sorry, uh, one of our friends just walked through the door to give Gavin's cat <laughs> some uh, cat food. So I, I lost my train of thought for a second. But, I can take uh, over for a sec. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Eric, for the two bucks, by the way. Really appreciate Eric coming in with the first super chat of the live stream. We appreciate it, man. Thanks so much. Um, same exact politics as Joe Crowley. So, yeah. Uh, obviously there might be a, a few differences here or there, but I'm going to guess that basically this Crowley is of the same mold politically as her father. Uh, and yeah, I, I mean, so yeah, basically the same thing, right? Um, by the way, thanks so much, uh, Z Goomer for the, for the, uh, chat. Really appreciate the fact that you tuned into our call and everyone follow us, follow us on call in, by the way, we have a great show on the call in app where you guys can call in as the name would suggest fun time get to hear from our community engage with you guys so uh thanks so much and i am enjoying the vacation uh goomer am genuinely enjoying it san antonio is a beautiful place delicious food uh but yeah anyway this is not where it ends you know no mickey's or sorry emma is not the only one that weighed in on this situation as we can see here ben burgess who's a friend of our show uh but also an affiliate and friend of the majority report also weighed in here uh, basically the day that this news dropped and just said, join me in supporting Kristen Gonzalez via Act Blue and, and then links to her donation page. Um, someone chimes in and is like, uh, what the hell? You're not going to support Nomiki, your friend, your you know affiliate. Um, and he says, I support DSA candidates across the board. as a mat uh, And I have as a matter of course, since I started doing this stuff. So obviously I support... Kristen Gonzalez, who looks like a great candidate. Um, it's not complicated and it's not personal, but there is a point of principle here for me. And again, this kind of seems like the response across the board from a lot of these DSA style uh, figures and commentators, even the ones, again, that are shockingly close and good friends, allies with Nomiki Kant. You know, it's not like Ben Burgess is out here like Zach and I, uh, you know, offering criticisms or going <laughs> after Nomiki when she fucks up. No, he mostly stays quiet. Um, so the fact that, you know, Ben and, and Emma and, and all of these folks are actually, you know, feel the need to get involved, weigh in and speak their piece. Uh, I, I don't think it's nothing. I think it's pretty, you know, oh. I think it's pretty important. And I think it's because of the way uh, it, they and, and honestly, if I were Emma or, or Matt, I, I would be kind of pissed. Right. Like we, we, you know, Gavin and I would never like just have somebody like unveil an announcement like this and not like tell the other people because it kind of puts them in a weird spot. They like you're live on air and this person that you know, uh, you know, I'm sure they've been in studio together multiple times. They've probably like chatted about a bunch of shit that has nothing to do with work and, and all these kinds of things. Uh, it, it makes it hard to be like, hey, man, it's cool that you're running for this, but 
I'm about to tell everybody to go vote for the person that you're running again. Like what? And then you're just, so you know you just kind of sit there, and then you're like, well, maybe it's a different district, and I'm wrong. I'm not looking at a map. They wouldn't do this, and then you find out, oh, they are doing this. Like I would be so mammothly pissed off at Gavin if I like got tricked into endorsing somebody bullshit. Like you know, and I, I you know, and and obviously we wouldn't do that because we plan our shows in coordination with each other. But it's just like the idea that that could happen would be massively frustrating for me. Uh, so, you know, extra props to them. And then that's the reason they feel like they have to come out and do this, right? Like, they, like, they, like, Sam literally set them up to have to come out and endorse the other lady vociferously, right? Like, she has, like, now their full on vocal support of all of the people who could have and would have been the basically the only cheerleaders for Nomiki Cons. Like, when Omiki's on her own show, she does like num numbers that are comparable to like the Vanguard, right? So just not enough to win a political election, right? A majority report, I don't think even really does numbers that you would take to win an election like this alone. Uh, as we've pointed out many times, the popularity of your, you know, your broadcast doesn't necessarily translate into a political victory uh, unless you have the other skills equipped to do it, a la like Donald Trump. And I, you know, I don't think the, I mean, The Apprentice played some role in it, but really it was his media savvy. They got him like, you know what I'm saying? Outside of that instance, I don't think that necessarily, like, you know, Jank Uger is, I think, or, you know, even Nina Turner running after she'd been on The Young Turks, all these kinds of things. I don't think it's necessarily like a shoe in. Uh, but I just think the way they presented it on the show, as if, like, oh, this is like friend of the show, regular co host, Nomiki Khan, she's doing this thing. Yay, Nomiki, we're tweeting it out from our official show account. It's like, no, dude, like now I have to come out and be like, I don't know what the show is thinking. And they'll be like, I don't know what anybody was thinking. They all know it was Sam Cedar. I don't know. Uh, like they don't want to call him out either to be like, oh, yeah, he didn't do any of his homework and he came out and endorsed somebody. And I don't know if he wants to unendorse her. He's probably like marinating in some sheer awkwardness right now uh, as well. Oh, yeah. Um, we're going to get to Sam in a yeah. second here because he was uh, exchanging blows with none other than Glenn Greenwald. Shock. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. His best friend. Uh, huge shout out to Matt Ocelot. God, thank you so much for coming in with the second super chat of the live stream thank you so much for the two bucks split the vote over force the vote lol laughable yeah that is that is pretty funny man uh can't deny it this whole this whole situation is pretty pretty hilarious undeniably thank you so much thank you eddie for the 199 uh did she not realize a dsa candidate was running um eddie i think she did realize what i don't think she realized was the amount of backlash she would receive i do not think she anticipated this amount of backlash and we're about to see some more of it this one is particularly damning um and this is from a, a blue check natalie sure um she's a, a writer a researcher a columnist whatever you want to call it uh, and seemingly someone who is a a friend or an ally of nomiki Kanst to herself um as natalie says here i like nomiki Kanst, have gone on her show and would be open to supporting her for some other office but i'm beyond disappointed that she jumped into this race Gonzalez has already, uh, sorry, Gonzalez has already had the organized left behind her for months. It's not like Gonzalez just declared, you know, That's she's, what I'm been, saying. she's been in this race for a while. She's been on the ground for a while. Um, and seemingly the entire left has consolidated behind her besides Rokana uh, until Nomiki saw this lane and decided to run with it. Uh, this is pure spoilage and Nomiki should bow out. So, uh, to be honest, guys, this is probably exactly how Ben Burgess and Emma Vigland and uh, the Majority Report crew and all those other people feel, too. Uh, but Natalie's free to say it because she doesn't actually, you know, personally have to deal with and interact with Nomiki Kans on a regular basis. So, you know, she kind of avoids that intense awkwardness. Again, not literally seemingly knowing Nomiki in the same way besides having gone on her show. Uh, she's not her friend necessarily. Um, so she's kind of saying what the rest are thinking. Uh, or are too afraid to say, which is basically, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? If you're in the DSA or involved in the DSA, this is like not cool, essentially. Um, and it says here, good context on this race from Ross Barkin, who's also a writer. Since this was published in February, Gonzalez has built organized support and field operation, joined DSA back New York State. State, uh, New York State slate and was just endorsed by AOC. I have no godforsaken clue what Nomiki is even doing here. So again, absolutely damning. And here's a Jacobin article about how the DSA has a chance to take another leap forward in New York politics, thanks to uh, Kirsten Gonzalez. And this is all being fucked up, essentially. It's all being fouled up 
by none other than Nomiki Kans, who's supposed to be the ally and defender numero uno of DSA, all things DSA, AOC related. So again, the, it's not just people like us. It's not fucking, you know, Jimmy Dore listeners or whatever that are mad about this. It's it's Nomiki Khan's own audience. It's her own supporters. It's her own followers. It's the people that share her ideology that are pissed about it, which is what makes this dynamic so interesting, at least to me. Uh, she goes on to, of course, you know, put on here the link for Kristen Gonzalez, donate. Um, and Nomiki actually responded to this. Uh, Nomiki says, this is a new district, Natalie, where I live and organize and people, including DSA members, asked me to run because of my connections to the community. The others were running in a totally different district. I believe in democracy and I'm happy to discuss off the internet. Off the internet as if you're not running for public office and shouldn't have your discourse on uh, right. public where it should happen as the fucking person that believes in socialism. Well, okay, sure. Right. Yeah. And and I love the implication here too. It's like, oh, I'm not doing this out of a selfish, you know, vain reason. I was asked to do it. You know, I was, the people have been begging me to do it. It's not, it's not anything to do with my own desire to, you know, increase my, my platform or my clout or anything. No, the people were just. Meanwhile, begging. the people. <laughs> like, yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? It's like it's like when she was award winning journalist. It's like the award. It's like yeah, a cup of coffee and fucking whatever the golden apple she won or whatever the or, you know, glass apple or whatever. Yeah, and I think what's really actually it adds another interesting flavor, another interesting element to this is uh, the people who are normally more open to just being like, you know what, fuck it, crowd the race. I don't care. I'll, I'm going to support the candidate that most ardently supports my own principles uh not that nomiki has distinguished herself in any single way other than saying like many people are saying this very trumpian response to criticism by the way just to point that out there of uh, uh you know just say D uh, you know miscellaneous dsa members like that could be anybody that could be like three dudes on the street that signed their name to a fucking list one time oh now i'm on the dsa like it could be anybody it's so non-specific that it's absolutely meaningless uh just to, and, and it kind of like again it's just another blow against like how you're going to present yourself uh when you're seeking a public office but uh anyway also she makes another mistake here of saying she said the others were running in a totally different district that's just not true this woman is running in the exact same district that you're running in and they link to that right fucking there in the thread you replied to before you replied to it so there's no and then and then uh the entire cadre uh, of of people that you uh you know uh sometimes work with came out and said hey we don't want you running for this district we want the other person but not to uh to get off this hill really quickly it's just funny to me that the people who are typically the dumb dumb leftists to somebody like Nomiki are the ones who are gonna be like fuck it I'm just gonna vote my principles I'm just gonna support the candidate even if it's like a dark horse even if it's a fucking lost cause I'm gonna vote for the person that represents my values because that's what I believe in and she calls that dumb dumb leftism so I'm just hell I'm I'm just eagerly awaiting that actual legitimate argument that she's going to present because she doesn't have one uh because as we pointed out a hundred times this is all about narcissism and i think when it blows back in her face uh she's she's gonna bow out and i i don't think she has any chance of winning i don't think she had a, a chance of winning anyway um but now she definitely doesn't have a chance of winning yeah, exactly. And of course, even the DSA itself had to come out yesterday and, and remind everyone that, you know, they already have backed a candidate. Support has already been consolidated behind Gonzalez um, and, and that essentially Nomiki should not, you know, uh, succeed as being a distraction in this race, which is what she's ultimately going to end up serving as. So uh, very, very interesting stuff here in my opinion thank you so much eric for the two dollars sam addressed his part today last 15 minutes yeah we're going to take a look at that here in a second too thanks so much for the two bucks eric really really appreciate that thank you hysteric raider too always appreciate it hysteric raider thanks so much for the two bucks i regret ever helping her run for office uh any comment on that one zach oh i mean i never i i, I mean i never say you should ever like fuck it you know regret helping whatever I, I mean it is what it is don't beat yourself up they're all fucking snakes they're running for office for the most part don't we've don't all be been duped yeah we've all been duped that, that's what i'm saying like you know what it is um like obviously you know i uh, you know if i were in this district like i would vote and i would participate or or whatever but you know uh don't don't yeah. worry about it don't yeah. don't don't lose any sleep about it yeah, don't don't lose any sleep about it. Although obviously I agree, you know, uh, I'm, I've made no secret of my opinion on Nomiki and uh, her poisonous brand of pearl clutching, censorious leftism. 
Um, again, I think it's poison a to the movement. Pearl clutching progressive. Let's stick yeah. with the alliterations. Yeah, I'm kidding. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Hysteric Raider. Thank you also, Virtuoso, Virtuoso for the five bucks. Doesn't Nomiki live in Arizona? She should unseat cinema for U.S. Senate. Just saying. Um, a, a quick Google search, Virtuoso, tells me that she was born in Arizona, uh, but like moved queen. to New York City, and, and I, I believe she still lives there. So yeah. uh, I don't think that one's quite accurate, although really do appreciate the super chat regardless, man. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. And thank you very much, too, by the way. I appreciate that. Wow. I'll just uh, but, go eat shit then. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we do have more, if you can believe if it. you... <laughs> so yeah back to this clip of emma vigland that we shared earlier um all right let me pull this one up real quick yeah so back to this um he says awkward and of course it is awkward there's no denying that regardless of what you think of aaron he says awkward uh, david griscom chimes in who's also a majority report affiliate he's i mean he's not on there all the time but he's definitely part of the crew right uh, yeah, I don't so think he, he's paid by them, but like he's definitely like an adjacent member. Yeah. Yeah, he's a contributor, whatever you want to call it. He says, What's awkward? Uh, besides both Matt and Emma have said they support the DSA candidate in this race. And come on, man. Come on, David. You know, I, I like David Grissom. I think he's a smart guy. I think he's a good faith actor. Uh, but you know this is awkward. You don't have to you don't have to lie about the awkwardness of the situation. As Zach said, they endorsed Nomiki, had her on the show, hyped her up, tweeted about it, only to, you know, realize after logging into Twitter and seeing all of this backlash that oops, kind of fucked up, kind of went against the organization that we all claim to, you know, care about, be a part of and support um oops now you got to come out here retract it kind of dance around the uh unethical nature of what you know nomiki's doing and, and you know kind of just make a mess out of the whole situation so uh again we gave emma credit we gave emma viglin credit and we gave um uh matt leck credit and we gave ben burgess credit for actually standing by their principles um despite how awkward it was uh but that being said it doesn't take away from the fact that it was obviously awkward and that's what aaron points out here by saying uh so they're not support supporting their own <laughs> co-host sounds awkward yeah it, that's accurate he then says david griscom then replies idk man i think making the right call on this race and supporting gonzalez despite one of your contributors running shows a great deal of integrity it does I agree with that. And I don't think Aaron disagreed with that. You know, that is something can be awkward and also uh, have integrity at the same time. And that's what we've said here. It's like, yeah, props to Emma and, and props to Ben and, and the crew for standing by their principles and doing what was awkward. Uh, but yeah, it was fucking That's awkward. why it was a display of integrity, right? That's right. why, uh, that's why, right? Uh, because it was awkward. If it were the easy thing to do, it wouldn't be a display of integrity, David. It yep. was hard because it was awkward. Like, let's just be honest about that. But anyway. Right. Right. And, and thank you so much, by the way, Hysteric. Not losing sleep, but oh, how she has fallen. Pitiful. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And again, I talked about this a bit on our call in today and a bit on our stream from the other day. Um, but, uh, you know, of course, no Mickey Khan's better than a Republican. I'm not going to deny that. Uh, that's obvious. Um, but when it comes to the kind of the post Bernie Sanders left, I, I do genuinely think that her brand of progressivism has been quite poisonous and has been easy to attack for good reason, easy to point out the flaws in her constant calls to censor people that she disagrees with. Uh, it's not it's not a good look. So, you know, that's how I feel about the situation. And I totally agree with you, Hysteric Raider. Anyway, this thread continues. Aaron responds, let's assume you're right that both are endorsing the DSA candidate, which isn't clear in that clip, doesn't change the fact that a show regularly accusing others of splitting the left has a co-host trying to split the left in this race. The call is damage control and it's hilarious. So, yep, there you go. Uh, exactly what you just said, Zach. Yeah, I I mean, look, it, it, I mean, that's exactly what happened. Right. And and I just think that the real read of the situation is like and, and I see John Masters in the chat. Look, the, the problem isn't now that we're all more talking about uh, Kristen, or Kristen Gonzalez or, or Nomiki, right? Like, that's basically irrelevant. It's not like our dialogue is going to have absolutely 0% of an impact on the actual race in New York uh, that's occurring. It will matter not at all. Uh, which so, But what will matter is if uh, Nomiki goes out there and, you know, gets a shit ton, uh, not a shit ton of votes, but just like, let's say 5,000 votes. I don't know how many people are going to participate in this. Probably more than I would 
bet for a race like this in Missouri uh, because it's New York and, and that and to me seems like a more, much more densely populated state, uh, but it's not New York City. So I don't fucking know how their population is divided, but let's just say she pulls in like, you know, 15 percent of the vote and that vote uh, would have overlapped with this other woman. Uh, that's what actually matters. It's not the name recognition. It's like and also she hasn't distinguished herself at all from this other woman, which I think is the other big part of it. It's like, you know, people don't understand why she's running in the first place. So I don't know. I think all of that needs to be addressed. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I did want to take a look too here at Sam Cedar's reaction. Yeah. Apparently he discusses this in the last like 15 minutes or so of this live stream. So uh, I don't have an exact timestamp. Might have to do a bit of fishing here. So sit tight and hold with us. Uh, I think this is around the time he starts talking about it. If not, we'll go back. I've been Looks trying like he's to about to issue a correction just by the face he has on. But that, that's right. just, you know. Don't know what that means. Yeah. Is that not good stuff? I have no idea. I, I, I'm, I'm quite convinced I just said something that probably could get me banned yeah. out of like, like 23 countries. We're or probably something. off Twitch now. Yep. See you in the fun half. The fuck? Um, or something, and there was like um, the fake Sarah pictures. Sarah Silverman. Apparently she gets on them. Apparently they get Sarah Silverman. Interesting. It's kind of cringy, honestly. No, man. Sarah. She was a legend. She was in School of Rock, Richard Linklater's best um, film. <laughs> I forgot she was in that, actually. Pictures. Hey, are they talking about that? Was fucking Sarah Silverman? Did she have an opinion? How you had jokes about like uh, eating, uh, you know, was it jelly beans off of, uh, you know, and I'm turning it. All right. Well, we were, we were told that they addressed this in the last 15 minutes. So apparently we were lied to. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, I don't know when exactly they yeah, get to this. How kids communicate now through Instagram. No, oh, I yes. Try and jump to when Sarah Silverman's gone and see if it's from uh, members that, of course, we're going to head into the fun half of the program, wherein we will probably take your calls can't promise there's going to be many calls taken so all right what the fuck is going on here is what there in a the food fuck? come on guys know. come on guys um all right let's try this one one more time let's just go it's night nice. so and then through the weekend i doubt that they talk oh. about it with Sarah I just Silverman. Things, i'm the only one in the office that still hasn't gotten it and that would be really that would add, that would add, that would like, add insult I, to injury I, I, you know what i mean whatsoever hmm. It's like, and let's have I this massive little, celebrity come up here and talk about how we about all me. fumbled this one. Calls? Can't promise there's going to be many calls taken. So, caveat. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't know what to make of that. Uh, sorry for wasting your time and forcing you guys to listen to Sam Cedar. Um, Sam Cedar out of the podcast. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> anyway, sorry about that, guys. If anyone has a timestamp on the Majority Report episode, they split up the fun house with a different link in the description. Oh, now, cool. well, thank you so much, Eric. Uh, feel, Eric, please send us a link with a timestamp. We'd really appreciate it, and we'll play that. But unfortunately, I can't you know, force our audience to watch us you know, skim Sip through, through, fish through shit. Uh, but please do send that, and we absolutely will react to it. And thank you very much for the Super Chat, regardless, and joining in and commenting. Thank you so much. Uh, but there is more, if you can believe it. You can believe um, it. Let's pull up one more. Here we have Glenn Greenwald wading in to the Shock. muck. Yeah, as as he loves to do. Uh, Honestly, thanks, though, this Eric. is some of my favorite Glenn content when he demolishes uh, Sam Cedar. This is uh, this is always an, a, a golden a golden opportunity to uh, view Twitter as a spectacle. Yeah. And, you know, come on, cut me some slack, guys. I'm supposed to be on vacation here. Uh, what do you expect me to spend my time sifting through every single majority? Yeah, you, hey, Eric, I got a great fucking idea. Why don't you start your own fucking YouTube show? <laughs> hey, get to work. I chop it up. Let's go. I'm excited to watch. You get 25,000 fucking YouTube subscribers and we'll tune in. I'm kidding, of course, but not that really. Go shut the fuck up. Leave Gavin alone. He's on vacation. I'll start something. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's pull up this one. Here we go. No Mickey cons uh glenn greenwald again wading into the muck as he loves to do so do we <laughs> this is great <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah who, who doesn't love a mccarthyite fascist who explicitly advocates having congress investigate her political enemies because she's angry they criticized her online 
Seems like a perfect fit for the Democratic Party. And the majority report, good luck to Sam Cedar and his sidekick, Nomiki Kant. I love how he has to tag everyone involved every time, you know, just in case they didn't see. You know, Bro, uh, I like that. I like that. Let's just be directly confrontational. It's like there's no subtweeting in this house. Let's just let everybody know exactly who the fuck we're talking about. I like that. That's <laughs> honestly that's a, that 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 that's that's admirable. <laughs> absolutely yeah absolutely uh so uh, and you know as you guys know if you watch the show um you know no fan of nomiki cons we've done multiple videos breaking down our disagreements um uh, but seemingly you know there's no end to this th there's no end to this uh barrel of shit you know every time i see a screenshot or a clip that i haven't seen yet uh, it blows my mind i'm like it gets even worse how did i not know about this Here's no Mickey weighing in. If you guys remember, uh, at one point, Ro Khanna was confronted on the street by Max Blumenthal, who obviously Zach and I don't always agree with, but he had the right to do that. And it's ridiculous to use this kind of language, in my opinion. She says, at what point is Congress going to look into these paid propagandists here uh, to disrupt the left and push fascist conspiracies? Um, some of the funding has shown up on tax returns being funneled through journalism awards. That's ironic, given that she pretended to be uh, the recipient of journalism awards uh, by Asadis. These guys are toxic and spreading disinfo. Uh, so, again, the most funny part about this is the fact that she claimed to be an award winning investigative journalist, even though that's total bullshit. Uh, but here she is accusing other people who have actually received journalism awards for being paid Asadis, which, again, there's no actual proof for if there was we would talk about it we would you know acknowledge it but that's just simply not the case um so again i didn't even know this clip exists frankly uh but it's not it's not uh, inaccurate despite whatever you may think of glenn it's not inaccurate to say uh, that she's explicitly advocating for congress to investigate her political enemies because she's angry they criticize her online that is a hundred percent what she's doing and again you don't have to like glenn greenwald to acknowledge that uh it's simply the truth that is exactly what happened uh so uh, of course you know glenn greenwald sees this news he throws a bomb right into the middle of it all uh she then he then goes on to say awkward maybe congress should investigate nomiki Kant to find out whether she has funding from the kremlin or other u.s enemies given how blatantly she's dividing the left trying to sabotage the dsa backed daughter of an immigrant family uh, Kristen Gonzalez. Yeah. And and this is actually pretty funny in my opinion too, because you know, it is correct that Nomiki Kans is out here accusing everyone of being paid off, of being a stooge. Uh, but who's actually the one acting like some sort of a fucking asset? It's Nomiki Khan. She's jumping into this race to split the left and pave the way for Joe Crowley's fucking sister, niece, or whatever the fuck. I'm not saying that's what she's doing. Obviously, I don't actually think that's what she's doing, but I'm just saying if anyone's acting like a fucking paid asset. Uh, it's no Mickey Const. Yeah, and, and here, I just wanted to pull up this. I've got this other show prep for you guys, heavy lifting. You know, uh, here at the Vanguard, we're so committed to that. So in, anyway, here's a little bit of evidence for you guys because, uh, you, you know, the receipts over here. But anyway, this was uh, everybody remembers, I feel like, for the most part, uh, you know, uh, but we wanted to throw it back up for everybody. Uh, Katie Halper was exposed as a Russian infiltrator uh, by none other uh, than no Mickey Kant and Josh Fox. And if you guys remember Josh Fox, he's completely irrelevant on the Internet right now. Now. uh but uh he you know he was an environmental guy uh you know filmmaker kind of a guy uh i think he still is i mean technically he is uh he still is and all, all that jazz but he was ruthlessly uh opposed to the uh planet of the humans documentary and like you know slandered the fuck out of michael moore he was a big part of that gang um and you know, so him and Nomiki get together in this clip and uh, they get to, uh, you know, they expose uh, Katie Halper for uh, being a Russian infiltrator, uh, you know. Uh, but anyway, this, there's uh, multiple articles about it, actually. I've never heard of countervortex.org, so I'm going to fucking, you know, anyway, Russians uh, resisting humanities downwards. This looks like a blog. Anyway, uh, the kind of I think people I have that I might have. Oh, did, is there actually the clip? Did you want to play it or did you just want to? Uh, oh, that? I was just pointing it up there just to make sure that we had our receipts just so that our audience didn't get unruly over here. I uh, wanted right. to make sure that nobody knew I was making that up. Uh, no, but obviously, and I also thought that was funny because uh, that clip, if anybody does want to watch it, it's actually just uh, Leslie Lee and Katie Halper like roasting uh, Nomiki cons for uh, just being fucking just so irrational. And, and to be fair to Nomiki, uh, not that she pushes back at all, uh, but it is mostly Josh Fox making the uh, accusations in that clip. But either way, it was her show she's responsible for uh -huh. yeah if she didn't push back and she basically implicitly agreed then that that is what it is that is exactly accurate um and thank you by the way so much for the five bucks actually if nomiki drops out this possibly helps gonzalez 
they have likely brought online media attention to this race. Well, you know, maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. Uh, if Nomiki drops out, we'll, that, that might be the case. Will she drop out? Let's let's wait and see. You know, if she does, obviously, I guess we'll give her credit, but I'm not predicting that happens. Yeah, I just I just completely disagree. Actually, I I don't think we've seen any evidence that in these smaller races that the online attention, the online media attention from these isolated and remote uh, points of interest uh, do actually shape the outcome of these elections. I mean, look at the mammoth support that uh, you know TYT and their adjacent channels tried to put her uh, behind Nina Turner recently, and she lost by massively more uh, than she did the first time around. True. So, mm, I, I haven't seen a lot of evidence that that would support your your claim, but I appreciate your perspective, and maybe I'll be found wrong. Yeah, uh, the only thing at this point that essentially could you know fix this wrong is if Nomiki drops out right now. And says, I apologize, everyone that was going to support me, you know, get behind Gonzalez. This is the candidate. That's the only thing that could help. And, and obviously, again, we'd have to give credit where it was due if that happens. But I don't see it happening. Um, she wouldn't have run if she was going to do that. Like, I, I mean. Right, right. Exactly. Although, to be fair, I also don't think she anticipated this level of backlash, right? I, I, I don't. I, I can't see her anticipating this level of backlash, even from her friends and co-hosts, etc. Um, I, I really think she underestimated just how principled these people were, uh, which, again, is pretty funny, given the fact that uh, I think they underestimated her or they overestimated how principled she was. Yeah, they I don't underestimated think they ever, her narcissism. Exactly. I don't think they ever uh, would have you know, got involved in the first place, um, you know, if she wasn't... Anyway, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I got distracted. No, I, I do. I, I, I do know what you're saying, though. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I don't think they would have expected her to buck the party line, essentially, to buck the DSA candidate that... It's not they did, like, they didn't expect her to be a spoiler, frankly. Right. I mean, not to use the language of the fucking you know, uh, people that I normally, uh, you know, oppose, like normally, like, and, and, you know, I don't like necessarily believe in uh, spoiler as in like, oh, like this person, I, I, I don't know. It's an interesting thing. It's just, it's very poor strategy. And the big thing is the, the massive hypocrisy, right? Like um, if she was running it and she had a real firm, like, I don't, I would even feel better about this if she just had a firm bone to pick with this lady, right? right. Like, you know, like, like, I could at least understand that if she was like, this lady doesn't support censorship. And that's like the one thing Nomiki seems to actually believe in that's different than, <laughs> uh, you know, everybody else. Like, okay, great. Like this, like I'm going to run the campaign that's like, you know, the uh, the the thought police lefty and see how that works out for you. Uh, you know, fine. But at least have some sort of differentiator, right? Yeah. Like if you think being the like most triggered leftist uh, to run in a race uh, is like a recipe for success, then uh, by all means, you should have the right to call out this other candidate. Because uh, then I think you might actually be doing some work for the Overton window. If you're like actually on the ground being like, being like, this person isn't like woke. Uh, I'm just, I'm not trying to, you know. I don't know. Sure. Well, yeah. No, but you, you touch on something that is very accurate and that we haven't seen yet from Nomiki Khans, which is that, you know, she needs to address what her case is if she's going to run against someone who seemingly shares her ideology and is her uh, ally when it comes to policy and occupies the exact same lane of being a DSA leftist. If she's going to get in this race and oppose that candidate, she needs to make the case for herself and against Kristen Gonzalez. You know, she's not just running against Crowley. She's running against Kristen Gonzalez. She's taking votes. She's taking donation money. Uh, again, she's actually opposing Kristen Gonzalez. So she needs to make the case why she's the better option and why all the DSA uh, supporters should, you know, just, you know, buck the orthodoxy of their organization, buck AOC, buck the consensus in order to support Nomiki instead. Nomiki owes that to the electorate and to the DSA in general, because again, she's part of the DSA. She's part of that world. She's part of that political environment. And now she's oppo opposing the person who they've all consolidated around. So again, if she's going to run against her, that's fine, but it, she should at least have a reason. You know, she's, she should at least be like, you know, I share these disagreements and I think I'm the better candidate, uh, but she can't just tiptoe around it and ignore this dynamic. It's a very real dynamic and it needs to be addressed if you're going to run in the same race, at least in my opinion. And if, and if she doesn't want to do that, then she needs to disassociate from the DSA. She needs to, you know, revoke her membership or whatever and stop bullshitting. Essentially. And also she, I mean, she needs to at least address the fact that she's had a, like a done a 180 in uh, political analysis, given the fact that what she's, you know, uh, resting most of her, 
you know, uh, credentials on is her po political commentary and her analysis, right? And her analysis was that you should never fucking do what she's doing right now. Yep. Uh, so she's only interested in doing it when it's self-serving. And that's like the last kind of leader that you want because it just shows, uh, ex like, uh, you, you know, you, you know, you, every leader that you're ever going to elect is susceptible to being consumed by their power. Uh, but, you know, usually you don't know that until they get in office. This is like clearest day demonstration that you would abandon and sell out uh, the community way as soon, like, like faster than AOC did, right? Yeah. Like just right, right, right in there. That's so true. That's so, so true. She, she'll betray any principle she ever supposedly had in order to get ahead and or in order to further her own political career, which is, which is very revealing, but also something that we've kind of been, you know, telling you guys for a, a while now. Um, and again, this isn't personal, you know, perhaps Nomiki Kans is a lovely lady. I, I'm sure she is, but you know, we're, we're talking policy here. We're talking strategy and got to call a spade a spade. Right. So anyway, this continues, you know, I, I'm sure you guys can guess, uh, but this, this one keeps going here. Uh, let me see. I had one specific response pulled up. Here's Sam Cedar wading in and says, Peter Thiel is not backing anyone in this Democratic primary, Glenn. So I'm unclear why it would be of any interest to you. Glenn responds, how many other fascist white ladies do you have on your staff ready to sabotage a DSA backed progressive Latina? Are you going to announce <laughs> tomorrow that Emma is launching a primary challenge to AOC? Okay. <laughs> Just saying, calling balls and strikes over here. Uh, for the fact that Sam Cedar is the legitimate comedian, I think Glad stole the show on that one. That was much more funny, but uh, that was actually hilarious. It was a mid, it was a mid Peter Thiel joke from Sam. That's really buried in the ground because it's like everybody loves to roast Glenn because he's on uh, Rumble and Rumble has investment from Peter Thiel. Uh, but I bet you I could do a quick Google search and Sam Cedar has a Facebook account and Peter Thiel is like one. He was the literal first and largest outside investor in Facebook and he took all of his PayPal money that. That he made with guys like Elon Musk and he he had a very large venture capital firm and they all bet big or the you know that they bet big on Facebook and that made him a shit ton of money and now every time you get on Facebook you're making Mark Zuckerberg and Eduardo Saverin and uh fucking uh you know all those guys a buck and you're, you're also making Peter Thiel a buck right uh so anyway right right that, that's totally accurate um and, and I mean yeah obviously does uh, Glenn Greenwald have exactly the same politics as I know? Um, but that's just besides the point to, you know, bring that up. It's like, it's like address the substance of the argument uh, or, you know, stay out of it. It I was guess. a Nomiki pivot, exactly what she right. did when that one lady was like, hey, what do you want to address any, literally anything about this? And she was like, let's talk about this off air. I have a public position and a private position. Where have I heard that before? Right, exactly. Oops. Uh, yeah, there we go. Jesus, Gavin, um, where's your show prep? <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's another sub. Gone. Another sub. Gone. Fuck Thank you, shit. by the way, Cheryl. Coming in with 20 bucks. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Really, really appreciate that super kind donation. Uh, thank you so much, Cheryl. Really appreciate that. Yeah, so much. Thank you uh, for the love, Cheryl. We uh, really appreciate that. And uh, thank you so much for tuning into the Vanguard. It really means a lot to us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, more people waited in here. Um, Glenn Greenwald says, I'm sorry, but not – okay, so this comment commenter on Twitter says, do you ever cover news or is it just about who's pissing you off at any particular day? This looks like a comment on one of our videos. <laughs> <laughs> Relatable as fuck, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the TMZ guard. Oh, okay, uh, I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> And she says, uh, Glenn says, I'm sorry, but not at all surprised that majority report fans think it's trivial that some white lady is parachuting into a race where a Latina progressive already has lined up leftist support, threatening to sabotage her candidacy out of narcissism and entitlement. Where's the and again, lie? He's basically using the logic of someone like Nomiki Kanst against Nomiki Kanst. And honestly, bro, I, I, I honestly, in this particular instance, he makes it sound like a really strong argument I'm sympathetic to, right? Like, right. like I would say that even if Glenn doesn't actually, like, because I think this is, uh, all of this is super tongue-in-cheek from Glenn, but I, I'm saying I literally, like, you know, as another, as like an ag, as a leftist, right? Like, I look at that and I'm like, you know, this is literally kind of what she did, though, right? Like, it wasn't like the roles were reversed and she was the one that was on the ground doing all the mutual aid. And then this like Latina woman comes in to just be like, well, I'm the Latina woman. Well, like I wouldn't necessarily support that, but I do not support somebody coming in to like undermine like the actual, like, uh, you know, 
mutual, like the actual activists of a, that a community creates and fosters over, or you know, in, you know, over time. Like I don't know. Right. And thank you so much, Abiding, for the ninety nine cents. Really appreciate that, man. Um, anyway, no, Mickey responds. Uh, she says here, Glenn, I live in the district, a historically Greek neighborhood, for seven years. Uh, okay. Sure. I, I don't really know what the. Are you saying like because Greek people are white, you have the right to win this district instead of the Latina progressive? I don't really get the comment. Yeah, I think that I think maybe she he, she was saying that historically. I think that is like what she was trying to imply. Uh, maybe not in like a uh, yeah, but I mean, you know, what she was trying to imply was that it was not a Hispanic community yeah. and that it was a white community. That's why she a uh, historically Greek neighborhood. Woo that sounds like a dog whistle. We call a spade a spade here at the Vanguard. I've, I've called a lot of things dog whistles, usually not from people that identify as DSAers. Uh, but if you start telling me that you don't want a Latina running because this is actually a historically Greek neighborhood, hey man, maybe you could, maybe you should like uh, maybe get a. Uh, I, I mean, you know. yeah, and it's it's not like it's not like Glenn Greenwald, you know, said this is a majority Latino district or Latina district or whatever. If he had said like you know this is a majority Latina district, why are you doing this? And then she went on to clarify, actually. It's historically Greek. Maybe that would be one thing, but he never said that. All he did was bring up the fact that she was a Latina. And Nomiki's like, well, actually, you know, I'm I'm more in line with the freaking, uh, you know, I actually don't know what the fuck she is. I don't know if she's Greek or, or whatever. Anyway, uh, so, yeah. it's getting a little bit weird. Anyway, uh, she also then <laughs> comes in and says, I don't take political advice from a Nazi defender. Uh, so, you know, just further devolving the conversation. She's like, I'm not a fascist. You're a fascist, you know, well, it, go, it, goes, it, it immediately goes back to, uh, the fact that she doesn't have an argument and she doesn't want to have an argument. And what do people, uh, typically on, and that's the, of that political orientation, uh, say when they don't have an argument, uh, that you're a fascist or you're a Nazi sympathizer or like, I remember one time, this is funny, but this is irrelevant because it really reminds me of the politics that were really ripe at this time. I've talked about this before, but in the post Bernie era, it seems like the left has devolved back into like the 2014 era, uh, mm -hmm. leftist where we didn't have any uh, bread and butter issues to talk about. So we just like fucking screamed at each other about how we're all Nazi white sympathizers. Uh, yep. uh, uh white what did that lead to by the way? Nothing, literally nothing. Uh, well, except no, for it led Bernie to Sanders. Donald Trump. Uh, Oh, true. Yeah, I was gonna say nothing yeah. for nothing good. Nothing good is what I right. was getting at. Which is why we should fucking take that yeah. lesson and not lean into that optics. Yeah, and 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 it just reminds me of being in English class in my like senior year or junior, yeah. junior year before Bernie Sanders had come across, right? And and this and I was like talking about how you could enjoy the writing of Ernest Hemingway uh, without actually like you know agreeing with the politics. And you know, Gavin and I obviously already have like made this rational decision that you can enjoy an artist without fucking like agreeing with like, oh, did he say some misogynistic things about women? Like, of course he did. I don't like agree with his like outlook on life, and I don't think fighting makes you a man. And you know, fucking and getting drunk every day is a way to live, and all that kind of stuff. But you can still argue that like Hemingway is an amazing writer, and we got into this like whole argument, and she just like starts crying in class about how i'm like a not like a nazi and like a white supremacist <laughs> and shit and like literally like got left the room like all this kind of stuff it was like the literal definition of like a triggered social justice warrior but i was like still in my like i mean and i still have like a streak of this but like i was like i'm gonna debate me bro like fight me like i will not i will die on this fucking hill you can cry in class if you want i'm gonna keep that's fucking hilarious. debating you and like you know what i mean and yeah. like I, like that's where this goes and again, again, yeah i hate that shit too but. everyone hates that shit Every, even people on the left hate that shit. I promise. Uh, it's the most annoying shit. Virtue signaling is the fucking worst. And again, as I said earlier in our call in, you know, part of the reason why we do the show the way we do is to try to push back on that image of leftists. You know, we don't want to come off as these censorious pearl clutchers that, you know, just want to deplatform everyone we disagree with. You know, we want to engage with those people. We want to, you know, hash out the beef anyway. Uh, thank you so much, Nasser, for the five or the four ninety nine. Such delicious Vanguard content. I'm all here for it. Uh, yeah, no, no doubt about it. This has given us uh, quite the content to milk. So uh, thanks for the super chat, man. You know, thank you so much. Yeah, like farm animals waiting outside for the farmers to just throw out the slop bucket. Gavin and I start. <laughs> 
you know, ready to just snarf it all up. So that's, uh, but uh, I mean, hey, we're all part of the animal ecosystem and we know, we know who we are. We know our place. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nasser. Really appreciate that one. Um, thank you so much. Anyway. We're uh, barnyard yeah. socialists. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually, we should make shirts or something. Uh, to say that. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so yeah, uh, basically she's like, you call me a fascist? You're a fascist. I, you know what I'm saying? So just, just, I'm no not stupid. Here. You're stupid. Um, stupid. And, and still no real defense of, you know, the actual substantive criticism of her splitting the left. Yeah. That has yet to be addressed. Let's see if, you know, let's see what Nomiki is. I can't believe she still follows us, by the way. LOL. That's hilarious. Anyway, uh, I, I we're think, probably uh, muted. Yeah. Probably, probably. <laughs> um, you know, let's see. I don't know if she's been tweeting about this at all. I don't know if she's addressed the, uh the accusations no, dude, particularly what? i don't think she's oh gonna... another one this is she called glenn a nazi twice oh my god uh yeah this is the level of, of discourse we're talking about guys um but yeah uh and you know posting her donation link after doing so um you know here's a local leader leader that, again she she didn't do this out of a selfish reason guys you know business leaders Across New York State, we're begging Nomiki. I know what makes me want to go out and vote for a socialist. Local business leaders telling me to vote for them. What the fuck is the matter with you? <laughs> yeah, she can't find it. After she said that DSA members like support her or whatever, uh, she couldn't find anyone in the DSA willing to go out on that limb. So she's like dredging up random ass like business people or something. She One found this lady many... off the subway, gave her $35 and just set her up in her living room. Just tell, tell me about your life and then say that Nomiki for New York is going to make it better thanks lady here's your 35 dollars. have a nice day yeah so total totally fucking hilarious again i love this act where it's like you know i'm i'm not doing this because i want to advance my own career or my own cloud or whatever the people want it uh, they were begging me to do it it's like no they weren't Bro, dude it no, reminds me of dwayne the rock johnson they asked him if he would run for president and he, he was like he was like if the people called me to do it i'm like what kind of piece of shit narcissist are you you have no knowledge of politics at all you oh, hung out with the fucking saudi prince like you just you're not like yep yep and here's josh fox who you mentioned a total hack who smeared michael moore for making totally valid points in his uh documentary which he produced um he, he's excited you know no one else is but josh fox is excited so let that be known uh him and rokana are just freaking jazzed i served with stuff. her alongside her on the democratic party platform this is because she done nothing it'd be like if we ran for congress uh, we ran for office we'd have to make shit up because we can't advertise what we've actually done which is watch a lot of political youtube and then talked about it right like that's what she's done too i hate when people won't be honest about that i hate when they won't be honest about it look so he asked, I'm sorry, I'm spilling shit. I served with her, like this is Nam or something. I served with her on the Democratic platform. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? I walked through the fire. Charlie was everywhere. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I uh, Like, what do you mean you served on the campaign for Bernie Sanders together? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think they might have been delegates or something. Either like way, that. it's not like, I mean, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So again, just super cringe, super awkward. And as you pointed out earlier in the live stream, Zach, uh, people have been dredging up some statements from Nomiki that are, are just downright, you know, questionable, problematic, if not reprehensible. So as, as you said, Nomiki Khan's once accused uh, Katie Halper of being a Russian asset because she didn't want to censor Michael Moore's Planet of the Humans movie, uh, a film, by the way, which, again, is, is very innocuous. The way people talked about it would have you believe it was total insanity. But in reality, the movie was just pointing out the fact that the whole green energy sector, solar panels, electric cars, etc., themselves are very reliant on fossil fuels in order to produce the technology. So it was not saying that we should keep continue using fossil fuels. It was merely pointing out the flaws in the green energy sector and also pointing pointing out that you know, essentially green capitalism is not going to save us uh, from climate change. And that's a very obvious reality. Anyone that's not you know, uh, uh, up to speed with that is just freaking a moron. Um, so again, uh, Planet of the Humans was a, a very yeah. logical and accurate film. Uh, to accuse anyone of being an asset without evidence, I find reprehensible. You guys know my position on that. Uh, but this is just beyond the pale. 
Well, it, it, the other thing that I think is so important about that and, and why I wanted to bring this up also uh, and, and in true Vanguard fashion, you know, Katie Halper, you know, reacts to the stream and dunks on them, dunking on her, which, I, you know, I like that kind of energy. But uh, the reason that all these liberals that want to uh, capitalize, no pun intended, on green capitalism is because Michael Moore and uh, fuck, what's the name of his producer? Jeff... Uh, uh jeff uh, uh let me look it up it, it's just something uh planet of the human i forget his name jeff jeff if it's not jeff i'm an, yeah jeff gibbs there we go okay yeah. uh that that and he's produced other michael moore films anyway uh it, it fundamentally disrupted this liberal notion that we can continue to consume as much as we want and have no consequences for it as long as we consume in a new way and that is the liberal lie that will lead to our destruction as a, an entire species, right? And that's why uh, you see a lot of rich asshole billionaires that are okay, or you know, Silicon Valley millionaires that are okay with being Democrats now, right? Because the lie is green capitalism. This idea that we can continue to consume ourselves endlessly, that we will gorge ourselves to a, an ever in increasing exponential degree and never run out as long as we do it this one way and those bad people are telling us we have to do it the old way and we're ready to consume the new way never ever ever is it part of the conversation to consume less right oh use less water sure but not buy less shit that never ever ever happened buy an electric car buy a new car True. buy a new car that's correct buy solar panels for your house buy uh you know reusable x that's not actually reusable and you're gonna fucking buy it again buy whatever the fuck it is buy it buy it buy it and then you can continue to have this massive amount of waste right and you know one of the things that they always hate about michael moore they hated it about him before this was when he did the whole thing where he went around michigan and he watched the recycle and he films the recycling truck this is in a video you can find on youtube um you know they and he always brings this up so you can find him talking about it too uh you follow the recycling truck it picks up all the recycling and then it dumps it at the fucking dump because there's no money to handle it at the recycling center right uh and those kinds of things uh because you know what what they really want is for everybody to keep buying it and, and they want people to keep feeling good about buying it uh they don't actually care about solving the problem uh because if we want to solve these problems we have to start talking about consuming less and that is fundamentally antithetical to capitalism which requires us to uh you know every quarter over quarter over quarter you have to be making more and more and more ever expansion you know if you're not growing then you're atrophying kind of logic yeah no that's a hundred percent accurate zach and thank you so much by the way eddie for the 1999 really really appreciate that very generous donation and an interesting question too. LOL, you guys are awesome. Love your live streams. Thank you so much. Glad you enjoy, Eddie. Um, hey, I've been curious if you guys have an opinion on Robin D'Angelo and her work, i.e. white fragility and nice racism. Well, Gavin Eddie, and I prefer mean racism. No, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, as a fragile white man myself, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, as someone who is subsumed with white guilt, no, uh, I actually haven't read Robin D'Angelo's work, so I can't actually give a, a super explicit opinion um but that being said everything i know about robin d'angelo and books like white fragility is that it's very much so part of this like liberal industrial complex of like churning out these books in order to cater to again that kind of like white guilt rather than actually doing anything to you know help the black community or, or anything like that it's just kind of this it, it, you know like i said yeah, a hundred percent. Look, I I haven't actually read any Robin D'Angelo, so I guess that means I have no direct opinions of her. Uh, but I've read excerpts and I've read some pretty compelling takedowns, and I I I, I don't I, like. I think that there is some. Tr there's a lot of like truth to uh, like you know when people talk about like you know white privilege and when people talk about you know obviously there's systemic barriers and all those kinds of things that you guys already know about Kevin and I's politics. Uh, but then Robin D'Angelo takes those kind of real things and then shoves it through the neoliberal like fucking worm brain and then uh, spits it out in the most unproductive, unhelpful, actually detrimental. Uh, rhetoric possible that just you know really repels people and, and it, it, as Gavin mentioned it's really good for yuppie neoliberals they want to like you know appease their guilt for being rich and not knowing any black people and like you know destroying the fucking communities of like the more impoverished areas of this country and you know being mass gentrifiers and all that kind of shit 
Um, but I don't know a ton directly about her. If that makes if that makes sense, you know, I don't know. Um, like I couldn't point to like a, a specific point of her logic, other than the fact that guys, my general rule of thumb is that if there, if it's the kind of thing that I could be taught on my like first day uh, by HR at Google, uh, then I probably don't want to read that book. If it's something that I'm that reminds me of those painful eighteen months I spend in the startup world, I don't want it near me. And in fact, it immediately makes me want to vomit and shit my pants. I'm kidding. No, I just like I don't want to fucking do it. I don't want to deal with any of it. So anyway, that's why I don't want. Um, but anyway. Gavin's right. back, so I'm done stalling. Yeah, no, thank you so much, Eddie, for the question. <laughs> really appreciate that one. Um, and let us know your opinion, by the way, Eddie. I would be interested to hear your opinion. As Zach and I both said, haven't actually taken the time to read the books ourselves. So probably would love to hear your opinion. Um, and if you have any pushback on what we just said, feel free to offer it. Um, but that being said, it does look like, I, like we got one more chat from George. Have a good weekend, guys. Thank you, George. Have a good weekend right back at you, man. That's super nice of you. Yeah, I love that donkey or mule or whatever. That's, uh, that's your uh, picture right there. That's kind of tight. You don't get to see a lot of uh, a lot of creatures like that. I would I would like to pet that that boy. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and also, you know, guess who else weighed into this entire debacle given uh, Nomiki Khan's, you know, new candidacy recently announced. Um, here's AOC herself. If you live in NYC and live in Astoria, LIC, Greenpoint, Greenpoint, Murray Hill, Kipps Bay, Stewtown, or Gramercy, Gonzalez, Kristen Gonzalez is an incredible candidate for state Senate on housing, climate, healthcare, and more. Proud to support her. Uh, check her out and get involved with a link. Um, and again, Kristen Gonzalez has been in this race for a while. She did not declare her candidacy on June 2nd. Who did? Uh, or at least the day before? Nomiki Konst. Nomihi constant. So this is AOC. It's not just, you know, this is it's not like this is just some context, you know, less tweet. No, she's she's waiting in here to express her opinion about the fact that Nomiki Kant is now uh, openly challenging the DSA candidate, which she's already endorsed, Kristen Gonzalez. Of course, what makes this so funny is that Nomiki Kant is always the first one, the first one ready and waiting to defend AOC. I was I was making this joke, referencing this meme earlier, Zach, uh, during our call, and I think, but you know this meme. Oh, yeah. dude, yeah, exactly. That's I, my favorite use of this meme, in, where it's just like random internet person, random internet person, random internet person, and and that's like, oh, our job, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Anyway, this guy right here, no Mickey Const, uh, and then this one right here, AOC. That's how it goes, guys. And we've been covering this stuff for over a year now, uh, over and over and over again. Every time there's even a mild criticism, even the most obvious and accurate criticism leveled at AOC, who is there to projectile jump in front of the bullet? It's no Mickey Kunst. It's no Mickey Kunst. Seemingly, there's no one whose opinion, whose actions she respects more than AOC's. Uh, so again, that's what makes this so goddamn funny, in my opinion, is that AOC herself has to come out here and essentially uh, subtweet no Miki Khan's her biggest fan and biggest defender, who has sacrificed her own credibility time and time and time again to push back on very legitimate criticisms of AOC, uh, such as the ones made by Crystal Ball. Of course, you guys remember not that long ago, Crystal Ball accurately pointed out that AOC was a little bit late to the party when it came to the Amazon labor union. You know, she refused to, or she was going to speak and then she ghosted them. Um, she didn't actually endorse the movement publicly and only waited until they actually had a real victory to get involved and say, hey, you know, this is cool. Check it out, et cetera. Again, Crystal Ball merely pointed that out quite politely, by the way, saying, you know, hey, this is a little bit you know, slimy of you. Um, and who was there again to jump in front of the bullet? Uh, the first time, first thing, no Miki Kans jumped right in front of that bullet, as she always freaking. She also does. defended her for the Met Gala stuff, even when Sam yep. Cedar was like, "Oh, I don't know about that, guys. I don't ever go to these kinds of things because they're all just a bunch of aristocrats." Yeah, a hundred percent. Did look like we got a few super chats that stormed in though, so appreciate everybody, guys, uh, for uh, throwing those out here. It's got to be degrowth, more vacation time to save the earth. How's that sound, guys? Work smarter, uh, not harder. Uh, simple economizing and yeah gavin and i um so always support the 420 69 work week four days a week 20 hours maximum 69 dollars an hour um so there you go uh, definitely degrowth 
Uh, did you 100%. see? Did you see Rebecca Parsons on the Fox News? Yeah, dude. She she remember, was based. Remember when he was like, "You support thirty dollar minimum wage." Yeah. It's like, wait till you hear what I support. <laughs> <laughs> wait till you see coming. my platform, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't ready, bro. Yeah, Rebecca's going to seem modest. <laughs> I'm going to come for the whole cake, cowboy. <laughs> 100%. Anyway, thank you so much for the donation, Matt Ocelot. God, really appreciate it. Yeah, as always, Matt Ocelot. God, really appreciate that. And, and yeah, absolutely. More vacation time. 100%. Everyone deserves... Like, it's crazy. I mean, it's, I know it's obvious, but it's crazy how much of our lives we've been toiling away at bullshit jobs, jobs that we... Hey, even jobs that you like, you know, I love my job, but I have, I need a break. I need a vacation every once in a while. Even if you fucking adore your job and are super lucky to have it, you, everyone needs vacation time. And of course the working class people more than anyone. So yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, and I think that is a really good slogan. Work smarter, not harder. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's another reason why I'm a big advocate of like a universal basic income um, so that people can actually pursue jobs that they want to have. Uh, they can pursue their dreams rather than, you know, clocking in the nine to five or flipping burgers at McDonald's and stuff. Of course, that's you know valid and very hard work, but you shouldn't be forced to do it if you don't want to do it. Uh, and if you do want to do it, then you shouldn't have to be exploited in the process. So, you know, I think that's a good approach. But thank you so much, Matt Ocelot. Always appreciate your comments. Thank you also, Christina, for the $4.99. Caught the live show. Have a great weekend, guys. Thanks so much, Christina. Always appreciate seeing you in the chat. And really appreciate the positivity. Yeah, appreciate the donation. Thank you so much. We will have a good weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. And you as well. Uh, Thank you so much, Gabriel, too. I bowed out for a minute. Did you, uh, minute. Did you see Shahid Buttar's tweet uh, three hours ago? Can't say that I did see that. Let's pull it up. Uh, Shahid Buttar. Um, Shahid Buttar. Let's see what Shahid's up to. Better get him back on the Vanguard, by the way. He's a good yeah. guy. He's a smart motherfucker. Um... Yeah, I just wish that every single. <laughs> Never mind, we don't have to get into. It. I just feel like you always kind Ooh. of pivot. To you. We're glad what? to see into a race for New York. Given the publicly documented racism of socialists on the West Coast, it would be foolish for anyone to defer to Dems. See, this is actually what I was about Aww. to just talk shit on Shahid Buttarl about for a second. I was like, well, I don't. Uh, let's give him the benefit of the. This dude always pivots back to the fact that uh, that they uh, that there was the Intercept article about him, and then he'll talk massive shit on the DSA. I actually remember not to bring Virgil Texas from the dead, uh, but if you listen to like one of the last fucking uh, times I remember him being featured on on bad faith uh shahed buttar cap pivoting their conversation back to like how he doesn't trust dsa and all this stuff virgil is losing his temper he's like what come out with it like what is the problem like and you know it's just like a lot of like hearsay and stuff like that that just like seems like lefty organizing and maybe it was like and i'm not trying to like minimize racism or or anything like that obviously uh, but Given this, like, fact that the no Miki Const is like running to get uh, 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 a woman of color as a as a white woman in this race, like this just seems like brain worm, like bad logic, like bad take from Shahid. That's my reaction. Yeah, obviously, I really respect a lot <laughs> of the work that Shahid has done as like a you know lawyer and a civil rights advocate. Um, but this is this is bullshit. <laughs> this is bullshit, especially because he even admits that it's the uh, the West Coast that he has a beef with, uh, but then goes on to say that the entire organization. Uh, is is not to be deferred to so you know opposite side of the fucking country over in new york city but he's like because of the la dsa or the san francisco dsa rather being uh you know being corrupted or racist or whatever um therefore never go with the organization ever even when uh, it's not just the dsa either it's the working families party it's aoc herself the entire institutional left in new york city is behind gonzalez uh, but he has such a beef with the way that the San Francisco DSA treated him um, that apparently that totally he wants to go scorched earth. Yeah, this yeah, is it a totally bad supersedes look. all this other information. So, yeah, again, um, got it. Got a hard disagree with Shahid on this one. I think this is really an example of him letting his own personal experiences muddy the waters of his uh, understanding or of a good take in any way. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in. Is there anything else you wanted to shout about, Zach? No, I think we're good for today. We had a good chat this morning on Colin. That was the one thing I wanted to shout out to everybody. We had a really solid conversation over on Colin. So be sure to check out our show over there if you're looking for a little bit of extra Vanguard action. Uh, we did our coffee and Colin. Uh, had, had some pretty stellar music samples going on in the beginning of that one. Uh, if I do say so myself, the, the sweet, soothed tithings of uh, Angelo Badalamenti. Uh, anyway, no, I'm kidding. Uh, 
a good night, good chat, and uh, always good to be back on the um, uh, on the air. And oh, shout out to you, Gabriel. Did not know you were a KC local. Uh, yeah, shout out to you. I hope you enjoy your first Friday. Uh, you know, it was popping off down there, but it was hot as hell, so I came home. Yeah, thanks so much, Gabriel. Always great to hear from a fellow KC comrade. Um, and yeah, hit me up on Twitter, bro. Follow me on Twitter. Maybe we can hang out sometime. Thank you so much, Kemp. Also for the two bucks, uh, Celtics or Warriors? Well, I don't know anything about sport ball, so y'all have to give you that said, one to that gave That giveaway when you called them the Celtics, LOL. That's <laughs> hilarious. That's fucking hilarious. I wish Manny was watching this. Uh, uh, the Celtics are one of the most famous NBA teams ever uh, besides the <laughs> Lakers, but that's fucking hilarious. Uh, yeah, uh, look. Uh, look, uh... I'm going to go ahead and just say that I always have gotten bad energy from the Celtics. I've watched a lot of documentaries about the Celtics uh, for the longest time. Their fan base was like notorious for being like the most racist in the NBA. So I'm just going to go ahead and go Warriors, Golden State. What's up, Golden State? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't really have a dog in that fight. I like Steph Curry enough. Uh, my favorite thing about this entire, uh, you know, championship run is the fact that Kyrie and KD uh, tried to link up to form a super team. And then both the teams that they left are in the championship without them. Uh, so talk about some uh, just desserts. I fucking hate Kevin Durant uh, just because I think he's a, I just don't think he shares the ball correctly. He was yeah, anyway. Uh, I'm not like a huge NBA fan, but I watch a little. Thank you so much, Kim, by the way. Really appreciate the two bucks. Uh, thanks so much. And yeah, uh, feel free to ask Zach any sports related questions at any point. Uh, I'll let him take those. But yeah, thank you so much, man. Thank you also, uh, Kari99 for the 499. Only thing more exciting about Nomiki running for office is the Morbius Blu ray release. All right, guys, we have the comment of the stream, we have the super chat of the live stream. You win the gold medal, Kari. Uh, that's fucking hilarious. It's Morbin time. Dude, uh, not more be you, more be us, dude. You know what I'm telling you? You know what I'm feeling today? No, uh, the, I, I actually heard that they're actually going to re, uh, re-release Morbius in theaters for a little bit. Uh, so it's going to be Morbius all. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. You guys probably can't take any more of my BS. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's, it's just too easy. No, it's, it's, it's actually funny, though, because I, I feel like, uh, you know, there's only so much that the studio understands that people talking about this movie and mocking it is like ironic, you know, the, the, the Warner brothers or who Marvel or whatever the fuck, you know, I think it's actually Sony, maybe uh, whoever's Sony. distributing this shit, you know, they, they see all this internet buzz and the fact that it's trending day after day. And they're like, maybe people like Morbius. Maybe we need a green light, a sequel. In reality, it's everyone massively shitting on it, like roasting the fuck out of this movie. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, uh, we might get a sequel, guys. We might get a Morbius too because of, I love the meme of the culture, trolling. though. I love the fact that there was that Twitter thread I sent you, and it was just the entire yeah Vanguard take acid and watch Morbius. We just need to get on Twitch and do that. That would be so funny. The last time Gavin and I took acid together, I threw up so much. So that would be great content for you guys. <laughs> anyway, uh, but I guess it's that time for us to get out of here. <laughs> uh, it wasn't the acid's fault though. You started, ch no, started chugging stuff. beers. <laughs> Yeah, there, I took way too much that so my whole life looked like an impressionist painting up close. It was real fucking different. Yeah, anyway. who, who, who could have guessed that that would happen? Right? <laughs> I know, right? What happens when you take too much acid? But anyway, the Vanguard has taken too much acid. Shocker. Uh, we're about to we're about to break news here. But anyway, uh, shout out to everybody uh, that tuned in today. Gavin and I are off our rocker as always, but uh, it was a good show. Yeah, the Texas sun is getting to me. Uh, but yeah, really appreciate everyone for tuning in. Huge shout out to our patron community. If you guys like what you've seen, if you enjoy our show, uh, please do consider hitting up the link in the description of this video, supporting us on Patreon. Even just a few bucks a month really does help it out. Um, again, we would not be able to do the show without the support of our patrons. So thank you so much, guys. Like I said, we do uh, start and end all of our live streams with a big shout out to our patron community. Um, so this is what that is. Thank you guys so much. As I said, wouldn't be able to do the show without you guys. And, and thank you also to everyone that tuned in today, um, not just our patrons. Of course, we understand if you know you don't have the extra money to spend on a, a stupid show like this one. Uh, but you know, really appreciate those of you that do. And, and again, thanks everyone for tuning in. You mean in. a show that is single-handedly leading the revo revolution and the fight against the oligarchic <laughs> media system, Gavin? Don't lead our listeners astray. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but peace out, everybody. Take care. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Had a great live stream, honestly. And have an awesome weekend, comrades. Make sure to relax. Make sure to chill out. Uh, don't doom scroll too hard.
uh, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, no more BS. Ha, 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 ha